You're watching News Made Easy. I'm Anandi Chakravarti and today I'm going to talk about the Taliban. Who are they? Well, we really don't know who the Taliban are right now because remember, the Taliban first came into international limelight sometime in the mid-90s. Uh, from 94 to 96 is their peak period. And after that, in 2001, when uh, the uh, American so-called war on terror started, the Taliban was beaten out, beaten back, moved uh, out of, uh, of Kabul, thrown out of most part of Afghanistan, continued to uh, run guerrilla campaigns against Americans and the Afghan National Army. Um, and many of them went into hiding in Pakistan. So there was a Pakistani part of the Taliban which also emerged called the Tehrike Taliban Pakistan. And there was, uh, most of it was outside Afghanistan and parts of southern Afghanistan. Um, but who are they now? It's been 20 years. We don't know what actually emerged. There's been very little uh, available data. Much, they, they must have been studied by um, experts. They must have been studied by, you know, secret services of various countries, especially of this region. But very little is known about the real figures of the Taliban. Let's start with what the Taliban was in the early 90s. The Taliban actually is often mistaken to have emerged out of the anti-Soviet uh, Mujahideen uh, war, the, the war of which is called the so-called war of uh, liberation of Afghanistan, where, which forced the Soviet army to withdraw in 1989 after 10 years of occupation of sorts. Um, it is assumed that they emerged out of that. They did not. They had nothing to do with it. As Ahmed Rashid shows us in this uh, classic book, which you should try and get hold of, he shows us and explains that most of the Taliban's core fighters in the 90s actually grew up in Pakistan. They grew up in refugee camps. Many of them were Afghans who had been sent to, uh, who had escaped from Afghanistan during the Soviet occupation. And they grew up in Pakistani refugee camps. They were taught in uh, madrasas, often run by semi-literate uh, clerics. And they, all that they learnt was the Quran and a very, very extreme form of uh, the Sharia and a very extreme form of Islam. That is what they learned. They had, uh, as Ahmed Rashid points out, many of them had never seen or interacted with women. They were orphans who grew up in all male dominated um, madrasas in camps where they only saw men and they only saw fighters and they only saw clerics. They only saw a certain kind of austere living and they had a general distrust and a fear of women and which we, uh, which as Ahmed Rashid and others have argued, probably resulted in this extreme anti-women form of um, Islam which they tried to establish in their Islamic Emirate which they established once they took over Kabul in 1996. And the most important part of this is that large parts of Afghanistan believe that these are Pakistanis. Many of them were actually Pakistanis. They were not even Afghans. They were Urdu-speaking Pakistanis who had joined the Taliban and uh, were part of the fighting force of the Taliban. In fact, in several cases, in one of the famous battles with the Hazaras in the north, uh, many of those who were killed were Pakistani citizens. They were part of, they were, they were people who, were, who had nothing to do with Afghanistan. So they were either born and brought up or trained in Pakistan or they were Pakistanis directly. So this was the original Taliban which established an absolutely rigid, uncompromising form of Islamic state in Afghanistan which lasted for about five years till 2001 when they were ousted and it all happened because of 9-11. Then the American so America's so-called war of terror, war on terror started when the Taliban basically abandoned Kabul and left, and their supreme leader Mullah Omar went into hiding, died later, and uh, the baton passed on to others who continued a sort of guerrilla warfare, often against the Pakistani army in Pakistani Pashtun areas along the northwestern frontier provinces of Pakistan where there was a Pakistani version of the Tehrike Taliban which came out. Now, the uh, point is that uh, it's been 20 years now. 
we really do not know what the Taliban is like, who controls them. One thing is clear that when the Taliban came into existence and gained power, it was entirely driven by the Pakistani army and government. Originally by Benazir Bhutto and then the ISI increasingly, when it found that the Taliban is their best bet to control Afghanistan, especially the, uh, the, uh, the land routes to take uh, export to move goods into Central Asia, that is when they backed Taliban over their previous favorites, including Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, who was a Mujahideen leader of one time. Now, when the Taliban took over, only three countries recognized them, and one of them on Pakistan's urging, which is Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, and the UAE. The US was accused of continuing clandestine support to the Taliban, and there have been uh, various uh, books that have been written about how the Clinton administration was soft on the Taliban till there were these attacks, these terror attacks done by the Al-Qaeda and Taliban had given shelter to uh, Osama bin Laden. That's when the tide turned. But even at, uh, meet at during visits by the US Secretary of State in the late 90s to Pakistan, they made a very clear anti-Taliban uh, statement. But when George W. Bush came to power in 2000, even in 2001, uh, Taliban's then so-called spokesperson and foreign minister, uh, Vakil Mut uh, Ahmed Mukhtar Vakil, actually did go to the US and meet people. And there were attempts to kind of build some kind of a, uh, bridge by, by the petroleum company UNOCAL with the Taliban to ease their operations and to be able to put in natural gas pipelines in Afghanistan. But the Taliban were ousted, they became guerrilla. So we really don't know what the Taliban is like right now. We know in the past the Taliban was an anti-women force. It was an extremely backward looking anti-modern force. It uh, had banned television, radio, photography. Radio was allowed only for, but no music was allowed. Uh, men had to wear beards of a certain length. Women could not go out without, uh, unless they were accompanied by uh, their blood relatives. Men who were their blood relatives, they had to be fully covered. In fact, they, when they took over Kabul in 1996, the Taliban forced people to blacken their windows so that even sunlight, so that people couldn't look inside and see women. So women spent time inside homes without even sunlight reaching them. And remember, this is, we forget that Afghanistan had a democratic period, significant democratic period till about 1989, when women were, went to, uh, took up important posts, they went to school, got educated, they wore what they wanted to wear, uh, they could do what they wanted to do. Yes, there were restrictions like any other country, patriarchal country, like any other in the world, but they had a significant degree of freedom, which was taken away gradually as the Mujahideen took over first, and then as the Taliban came in, it was completely stopped. There was a certain degree of freedom that was restored once the new Afghan government came, the uh, uh, Americans took over, and the new Afghan government came into uh, existence after that certain degree of, at least on paper, but in villages, it is well known that that did not exist. Now, the point is that the Taliban right now, the person who heads it right now, or is the face of Taliban, is also another person who was a co-founder of the Taliban, uh, Abdul Ghani Baradar. Abdul Ghani Baradar was incarcerated in Pakistan for several years, apparently because he tried to open a, a kind of um, way to speak to Hamid Karzai's government, the American-backed government in uh, Afghanistan. He wanted to open negotiations. He was incarcerated. Uh, um, a lot of people say that he, he is more or less controlled by Pakistan's ISI and the army. We'll have to wait and see how that is. It is clear that the, pa the Taliban in right now is trying to recreate a new image. It is this is a uh, group which at first smashed TV sets and said that you can't even take photographs. They are happy to appear on camera and are distributing it. They, there are even Taliban reporters talking about how everyone's so happy that the Taliban has entered Kabul. 
uh, you can see footage of them taking over supposedly peacefully entering the presidential palace in Kabul. So clearly they have understood that the visual medium is important for propaganda. They have issued statements saying that uh, girls will be al allowed to study till high school. We have to wait and see whether that happens. They have said that women can participate in government, can even work as long as they follow Sharia rules. What that means, we don't know. Clearly, this is a softer image the Taliban is trying to uh, put up right now. It, the surprise element was the speed with which the Taliban has taken over. But as uh, veteran journalist and former army officer Ajay Shukla, who was the, the first and the only Indian to enter Kabul in when, uh, the, when the American forces entered it along with Northern Alliance. Uh, Ajay Shukla says that in, the, in Afghanistan, battles are often won by bribing. So it is possible that many of these people had been bribed and that is how one after the other these cities and districts have fallen. But uh, the point is where did the Taliban get the money? Chances are most of it would have been rooted through Pakistan and through Saudi support. It is well known that the Saudi Arabians have historically supported uh, the Taliban. The Taliban has started an outreach program. China, for instance, has said that uh, they are happy to work with a new government which is stable and peaceful as long as they don't support terrorists in uh, China, which of course probably means the Uyghurs who the Chinese have been trying to suppress. Many Uyghurs are guerrillas are inside Afghanistan, so the Taliban will find it difficult to find. 20 years, lot has changed in geopolitics uh, in that region. We'll have to wait and see how things work out over the next uh, few weeks. We'll keep updating you on this show. Uh, this is bound to be worth watching out for. Thank <laughs> you.